The weather is a quite important factor for landscape photography, but common weather services and also most of the weather apps are simply not accurate enough for me. I use something much better instead, and I used this already for some years now. We are talking about weather maps. And yeah, they, they made really such a big change to my photography because I'm simply always prepared for the weather. And why they are more accurate and how weather maps actually work is revealed in this video. It's so important to get the weather on point, to get photographs like this. Yeah, and it's possible to predict weather uh, like this, to get a rainbow or something like that. Let me just put this here. Hi, my friends. Very nice to see you. I got so many questions about weather prediction for landscape photography over the last two years. And I'm so sorry that it took me so long to prepare this video. But I want to be honest with you. The topic weather prediction is a really, really huge one. It is something like I would make a video about how to photograph and you know I always uh, try not only to scratch on your faces in my videos I really want that they are useful for you and yeah that's also the reason why I upload videos actually. We, we definitely don't need to know everything about weather prediction uh, to, to have an advantage for our, for our landscape photography. We don't need to study uh, meteorology or something like that. As a landscape photographer I'm interested in very special things how the light will be on my photo day, how the clouds will, will look in the sky, if we will have red sky maybe, uh, which mood can I expect to get, uh, will there be fog or hoar frost on the trees or something like that. And it's more things like that. And uh, first of all, let's have a look why I prefer weather maps over weather services or apps as well. Well, the first fact we should accept is a prediction is a prediction. There's never any guarantee that the prediction will come like that in, in reality then. But uh, weather maps offer us the possibility to get rid of this issue when, when we use them in the right way. The problem with the most weather predictions is that you get just a scala value. This means your weather app can tell you if there will be rain tomorrow or not. It can even tell you maybe a probability therefore, let's say we get the prediction that there will be a 60% chance to get rain tomorrow for instance. So we can simply plan for some spots for photographing in the rain obviously, but there is still a 40% chance to get no rain. And in my experience the probabilities are also not the most accurate things in weather predictions to be honest. So the question is, how will the weather be when there will come no rain tomorrow? Good question isn't it? Fact is that we don't know this information just from Scala values, just from an app. Again, that there is a 60% chance for getting rain tomorrow is a Scala value. What we need instead are vectors. This might sound complicated now, but please trust me, it is really much easier than you might think. Let me explain. You know, a Scala is just a value. 5 degree for instance or a 60% chance for rain, these are scalars. I mean there is simply no scope for interpretation. When the weather map says 60% chance for rain, it says 60% chance for rain. We just get one version of the weather but not more. What we need instead of such a scalar value is a vector and a vector is a value with a direction as well. So when we get more vectors together, they, they don't only tell us one version of the weather prediction, vectors also give us insights what could happen instead the primary prediction. And, and this gives us an advantage that is simply amazing because what would you say if I would tell you that there is a way to get all possible weather scenarios for your photo day tomorrow? This were a massive advantage, right? And this is exactly what weather maps do. They give us visualization of all the weather vectors. And finally, we don't only know if there will be rain, for instance, we see that there will come a, a rain front over the area where we want to photograph. And, and we can use the maps to predict the weather before, while, 
and after the rain front as well. In reality, the rain front could come a little bit later, a little bit earlier than predicted. This often happens, by the way. But it could also come a little bit shifted to the north, east, southwest, so that it will maybe not hit us finally. And this allows us not only to estimate the probability of will there come rain or not, it will also show us how the weather could turn when it doesn't come as predicted. Because we know what is beside the weather front here in our example. We simply start to see all the possibilities that could happen with the weather in our particular area. And I can think about a plan A, but also prepare a plan B, C and D maybe. Because I simply see all the possibilities. And that's amazing, isn't it? Because I, I can think already the day before for different weather scenarios. And for me, this was really a big game changer for my landscape photography. Well, now we know that weather maps offer much better information than usual weather apps or weather services. And before I will show you now how to read a weather map, let's quickly talk about the weather models because there exist different models and we should know about when to use which one. Basically, there exist global weather models and regional ones. The global ones help us to understand the general weather situation, while the regional ones help us to understand how the weather will actually be within a good range of 8 to 8 or 4 to 4 kilometers, for instance. This always depends on the resolution of the used weather model. I prefer to use the GFS model for my global weather prediction. A GFS stands just for a global forecast system and it offers uh, me weather data all over the world. And for my regional uh, weather prediction, I prefer the WRF model and uh, WRF stands just for uh, weather service uh, and, and forecast model, something like that. And whenever I start to predict weather, I have a look at the global weather first, just to get an idea how the tendencies are. Uh, will there be high pressure, low pressure, in which directions do the jet streams move and so on. And, and then I study the regional weather, especially around my planned photo spot. And th therefore I use the WRF model. Uh, this model is calculated with much higher resolution. It allows me to predict the weather for a particular point on the map actually. And, and yeah, I mean, that's exactly what we need in landscape photography, right? Well, when we want to use weather maps to predict our, our, our photography weather, we need any provider for weather maps, obviously. And as I live in the middle of Europe, I prefer Wetterzentrale and Modellzentrale.de, for instance. But you can use each weather map uh, you want, each provider you want. They are offered all over the world and they are totally standardized. So this simply means it doesn't matter which provider or model you choose, the structure is always the same. The design might look a bit differently and, and each provider also offers different features, but the structure is always standardized. And uh, when you're able to read the maps of, of one provider, you can read them all. Well, now we have a map, but how can we read it? Let's take a GFS weather map, for instance, a global weather map. And this is a map for Europe, for instance, and this provider offers also global maps for nearly everywhere on the planet. And at the top left, we always see the initialization time. This is simply the date and the time when the map was generated. And at the top right, we see the valid time. This is just for which date and time the map is predicted. Important is we see the set behind the time and this simply means that it is UTC time. And UTC stands for Universal Time Coordinated. I know this sounds all complicated, but it just means that this is Greenwich time or UK time for our friends from UK. So you have to, to add or to subtract your time zone. And as I live in Austria, for instance, our time zone is in winter here plus one. And this means I have to add one hour to the time up here. And when I see eight o'clock here at the map, it is nine o'clock on my, on my local time actually. Well, let's have a look at the next information at the weather map, the run. And for the most weather models, there are four different runs a day. There are also some where it's just one, but most have four. And we should consider that such a run usually takes uh, yeah, five to six hours, something like that. There are really, really big computers calculating all the data from different weather stations, from aeroplanes and so on, all the time. And finally, there are four such runs a day in most cases. And the zero run is at midnight, the, the six run at six o'clock a.m., the 12 run at 12 o'clock noon, and yeah, the 18 run at uh, six, uh, 6 p.m. obviously. And one thing is important, by the way, the calculated weather models get more accurate the closer it gets to the time for that we want to have the prediction. This means a prediction two days in front is not as accurate 
as a prediction 12 hours in front, for instance. So it's really a good idea always to use the latest available runs for our predictions. Now friends, if you like this video, please consider to give me a thumb up. It helps me, it helps the algorithm, and it helps also other photographers out there to find this video better on YouTube. Thank you therefore. Well, the next important thing on weather maps is the interval. I mentioned already that we want to have vectors and time is a quite important factor here. We want to see how the weather changed over the day or over the week as well. So with, with the interval, I can decide how many hours I get on my time axis. And this appears the time axis. Currently, there's an interval of uh, six hours pre-selected at this provider. This means when I click at the next map, I see how the weather will change six hours later. I have also, also these buttons here down here where I can switch to the next or to the, to the previous map considering the interval. And when I change this interval to 24 hours, I can see how the daily changes are in, in, in that week for instance. Now let's switch to the regional model as well. We choose Alps here for our geographical area. Uh, this is Austria here, by the way, the country I'm living in. And when I change to an interval of one hour, I get an idea of how the weather changes over the day. And currently we have just a precipitation map open here. And this could be rain or snow in this case. But there are so many other different maps like clouds in different layers, humidity, wind in different layers and much more. And I can choose any map here and I can switch through the day and each map offers us a kind of legend, what all the colors mean. So when we take uh, the 10 meters wind, for instance, this is uh, ground wind, by the way, we see the strength of the wind uh, with all these colors. And this is always in, in, in notes here, by the way. Dark blue means nearly no wind. Green already is quite windy. And yellow or even orange is already a little storm. And you see, uh, when this prediction here for this area is a bit more there, the weather will get totally different here. And the maps make us visible how it will get in that case. It doesn't tell us a scalar value only of, of one version of the weather and also with probabilities or something like that. It offers us alternative scenarios. But I don't want to mess up totally uh, with, with common weather services or weather apps. There's one thing we still use weather apps for and this is uh, the prediction of temperature. You know, rain could just occur within 10 to 10 or 20 to 20 kilometers, something like that. But temperature is not all the different within just a few kilometers. For everything else, I use weather maps. You have to engage a little bit with the maps, of course, and it will definitely take longer in the beginning. But as soon as you get used to it, it gets a normal daily process. I observe the weather maps daily or let's say, yeah, six days a week or something like that. And it doesn't feel that I would lose time here. It is more really that I, I save my, my photo days when I know right in front how the weather could change. These are very, very basics, of course, how to read a weather map. But the really interesting thing is how can we finally predict the weather with that? And, you know, I, I usually don't do this. But in this case, it is really better because yeah, it is simply too much of information in short time. I will make a whole weather prediction together with you, but in my next week's video. Maybe as a midweek's video, we will see. I will link the video up here then for you when it's online. Give me a thumb up if you like this. And thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see. You are the artist I'll never be.